So yeah, uh, hello and welcome to another video. Here I am in Bogota and I've just had a meeting yesterday with um, quite a notable person here in Colombia. His name's Richard McCall. He's a hotelier and more importantly, I suppose he's a journalist. Now, um, he's investigating the, the CIA reports that, um, uh, that were released with the JFK files and uh, they basically detail a rumor, some reports that Hitler was residing in Colombia uh, around 1955. Now the thing is, um, I didn't bring the camera unfortunately, so you couldn't, I couldn't record the conversation that I had with Richard McCall, but uh, not on video at least, but I did record it on, uh, on a microphone, so I have an audio recording of it. And I'd like to bring it to you guys, my YouTube followers, uh, so that you can experience it as well. And um, I thought rather than just putting up a, a blank video, I would um, actually paste the audio over a video clip and uh, I'll video the scenes here in south, in the south of Bogota, where I'm staying right now. Um, and as we talk about a document or a photo or something like that, I'll, uh, I'll just flash it up on the screen. Very old school. I've got no fancy editing equipment here or anything, so it's pretty rudimentary. So follow me. And uh, I'm going to start playing. I'm going to listen along with you guys. So I'm going to play for the recording. I'm going to dim all the other sounds down around us and uh, I'm going to let you enjoy this view of a South Bogota residential street and I'm going to quiet down all the other sounds and we're going to go over to the recording when I put my thumb up I'll have started playing the recording so three, two, one and go. Okay, neither of us are experts but we've, you know, shown an interest, of and course, it's timely yeah. because it's come out in all the press because it's so. Uh, it's and very that's topical, really, yeah. yeah, and it's interesting, and it's, um, you know, why not? Uh, so, anyways, let's get that and stuff. So we'll we'll just plunge in. Okay, so one and two and three. It's that time of the week again, folks. It's me, your host, Richard McCall, here in Bogota, Colombia, 2,600 meters closer to the stars. And this week we're outside. We've taken a field trip. Uh, Jeez. Yeah, I'm going to stop for a second there. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh gee, I didn't yeah. even notice. No, before. that it's just because that will really pick up. No, no, no worries. And, no worries. I totally understand. Uh, normally, if it had been just, but that's fine. But no, cancel. Some builder update. It's doesn't way up there. Stay. It's way up there as well. Close. He's on like the 17th floor. Okay, let's see if we can do it again. No worries. No worries. And if um, if he starts again, then we just go. We keep going. All right. So. I don't mind. Okay, here we go. It's that time of the week again, folks. It's me, your host, Richard McCall, here in Bogota, Colombia, 2,600 meters closer to the stars. This is Columbia Calling, episode 209. And this week we've taken a field trip. We've got out of the house, and we're not in Mombos either. We're in Bogota, and we have, well, I guess the way to introduce him is the original listener of Columbia Calling, oh, Stuart yes. Oswald, yes. here, and we're in the garden of the Juan Valdez, the back of the Museo Nacional, downtown Bogota, very beautiful, an old prison, of course, <laughs> and, uh, and we're going to talk about some very curious things. It's, um, I want to make this very clear from the very beginning that we are not experts in this theme, just people who've shown an interest, sure. uh, and let me just say that Stuart in 2013 wrote a blog on the subject and in 2017 only a few weeks ago uh, in fact did his own podcast which we'll link to on the Facebook page and everywhere else about this subject as well but it's timely and that's why we're addressing it and yes we won't keep you in uh, <laughs> on tenterhooks any longer we're going to be talking about the possibilities of Hitler in Colombia yes you heard that right that's Adolf Hitler in Colombia but first let's introduce Stuart uh, Stuart Oswald to the show, uh, the original listener, long-time resident in Colombia. You are a father, you're married to a Colombian, you're a chili farmer, and you work on the Panela farm in Vieta. Yep, you got it all, you got it spot on there. <laughs> so um, <laughs> how do you end up on a Panela farm in Vieta, Stuart? Let's no, say that. So let's, let's go from there. So first of all, thank you very much, mm. Richard for inviting me over and you've been on your show. It's a beautiful setting. It's great to be in Bogota, <laughs> up in the lofty heights of the Bogota Savannah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, how did I get here? I've been visiting Colombia 
now, so since 2005, 2006, um, I met my wife in, in London and uh, she sort of whizzed me off every now and then to be with her family, see Bogota and visit the surrounding countryside. Mm -hmm. and, and she's happy to be back here and living permanently or would she prefer to be in London? That's the thing. I think <laughs> she actually prefers London. Yeah. I kind of said, look, um, I'm married to a Colombian. Um, what am I doing in London? I'm not doing very much. Uh -huh. I'm just doing the same old job. So I might as well use that Colombian connection and go on a big adventure. So here I am now. Well, I think that's great. And, but the thing is, you know, even though she probably prefers London, I'm sure she's very oh, happy yeah. being close to her family. Because Colombians are, you know, very family oriented. Yeah, and we've got a young son, yeah. so she's happy to have the boy in the school and running free in the <laughs> countryside, not worrying about drugs, drug addicts and all that that you get out in, a, in, yeah. in the urban city. This is true. So it's, it's nice just to relax a bit, enjoy the nice weather, and she can spend as much time yapping away with her family and friends. And of course, Vieta, it's nice, as temperate climate. It's oh, nice yeah. and warm there, right? That's the thing. Now, she's fine, the boy is fine, but I am sweating 24-7. It's it not is that hot. hot. <laughs> well, okay, I'm used to, like, uh, you know, damp and cold London yeah, right, or Munich from the Alps, a cold, fresh air from the Munich Alps. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sweating quite hard and I actually enjoy it when, um, when there's a, a cloudy sky and a little bit of rain sometimes. When it, when it goes it just gives across. me a break from the heat. I understand. Now tell us a little bit. We'll get, you know what, oh, because it's so interesting that you have a, like, you, you kind of harvest chilies. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about those before we plunge into the main uh, content of this, this no episode. Yes, that's fine. What are these chilies that you farm? So these are, uh, these are... Uh, the chilies, they're called Cherka chilies, Cherka, Ahi Cherka, or Cherka Ahi, Ahi. Cherka, and they're spicy. And they are very hot. They're, you'd probably know them in, in the US as, um, the nearest thing would be bird's eye chilies. Mm -hmm. um, they're very small, they're not exactly like bird's eye chilies, but they're, near, they're the nearest thing. Right. And they grow wild in Cundinamarca and other parts of Colombia. Uh -huh. They're very hot, they contain a lot of seeds, and for their size, they're amongst the hottest chilies in the world. Wow. And, but but the, these, these grow wild? These grow wild. Um, me and my wife and our family, we have um, some land near Vigera mm -hmm. where we, um, we go and we work on Panela every now and then. And my little side project is collecting these ahi, cherka, cherka ahis. Awesome. And you export them? Wild. And I send them all around the world. We've got buyers from uh, all the English-speaking countries, including Africa as well. Wow. Countries in Africa and... Um, East Asia. It, I think it's I think it's phenomenal. Oh, all from your little plot of land in Vieta. Yeah, they, they do <laughs> tend to be um, Colombian expats. Right, however. right. But I do get some uh, some English names ordering. Cool though. That's, I think that's excellent. I mean, how, yeah, we will definitely get you back on that and talk about that because it is it, that's really interesting. And of course, to a lot of my listeners, I mean, the Colombians will know what panela is and the expats will know what panela is, but a lot of people won't know what that is. And so it's unrefined sugar. Cane? <laughs> yeah, it's basically uh, you cut the cane, you, yeah. you mill it, you squeeze it out, you get all the juice out, and then you evaporate the liquid away from it, and voila, it's crystallized sugar. And you make it into the blocks. You form it into blocks, or you go a stage further and you make them into uh, make it into pulverized sugar. Nice. nice. Pulverized nice. fetches a higher price, but uh -huh. um, blocks are a lot easier. Very cool indeed. You just do certainly keep yourself busy, and we're very lucky to have you here at the very you know, brief encounter here in Bogota. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so, I dabble in <laughs> tourism as well and a few other things with design, but we all dabble in exciting. everything. I think exciting. we make ourselves more time. So we're basically, we got together because well, we, we, we've been in contact for a long time now, and there was, yeah, sure. we're looking for an opportunity to get you on the show. But this, the fact that you did a podcast and in 2013, so preempting all of this exposure in the press by four years um, about Adolf Hitler in Colombia. I think it's just interesting that we should do something timely on this because you know, it was in the Miami Herald. I do believe it made the Washington Post. I know it made the Sun in It England. went viral. It went everywhere. Everyone wrote a piece about it apart from me. Twitter just lit up. <laughs> Twitter was I didn't really want to. Yeah. I didn't really want to write about it. But anyway, that's, I think it's really interesting. And so where, where does the information come from? So let's put it into, into context. I've got the article from the Miami Herald here uh, written, written by Josh Magnus and it, well, let's just do, the, do a little bit of a, of, a, of a summary. It is regarded as a historical fact that Adolf Hitler killed himself on April the 30th, 1945, when it became increasingly clear that Nazi Germany would fall to Allied forces. 
And then, so we have a couple of weeks ago, uh, President Trump harping on about declassifying some CIA documents and everybody really taking an interest in what could possibly ha uncover about JFK. Sure, yeah. But what came out for this part of the world is that potentially Hitler escaped from Europe and was hiding in Colombia in 1954. Totally unimaginable. And I just think this is very odd. I mean, we're looking at a space of nine years between his yeah, so-called suicide in, in a bunker and being in Tunja, so the capital of Boyacá, Tung has reasonably scenic in the old center. It's a you know a university town, but it's not got that much going for it. But so maybe it's the best place for him to hide. And we do know that there was a significant German community in Colombia. But yeah, let's let's go through the, the facts a little bit around around what we know about potentially Hitler being here in uh, in Colombia. Where would you like to jump in? You've got the actual documents. Well, see, I've got them right in front of me here. So. Um, the telltale document here is the 17th of October, yeah. 1955, and it's basically um, a report, um, a document, a CIA document, whereby through a friend of mm. a codenamed agent, Kaim, Loy, Kaim Lodi, number three, uh, he spoke to a friend who heard from Philip Citroen, who was a resident of Maracaibo in Venezuela in Venezuela uh -huh. and he was working for the Royal Dutch Shipping Company <laughs> uh, uh, geez, of how did that happen yeah? <laughs> and um, he, he actually started a newspaper in the town uh, an English language one called Maracaibo Times with his brother so this is Philip Citroen Philip Citroen okay. so he was basically um, whether he was um, boasting about it or just merely told his friend in secret that somehow led on to this CIA informant, Kaim Lodi, number three. And, and Citroen was a former SS trooper. Yeah, I so see we that should, on the... We should keep that there. So yeah. um, all of these agents, all of these people here, they at some time or another were part of Nazi Germany. Right. So part of the government in Nazi Germany or a stormtrooper carrying out their deeds in Germany. And they somehow became reacquainted or they stayed in contact in their new lives here in South America. So I imagine there was a, if, if it was to be true, there must have been a support network between these high-ranking individuals in this part of the world. Sure, um, I should, I I should mean, mention as well that um, predating this, there's a rather fantastic report. <laughs> It's totally outlandish. It's oh, this uh, one. in a police gazette, which is a bit like the the, the National Enquirer. It's really, just isn't it? yeah. It's, <laughs> it's uh, you got it's all got pinups and it's all got popular stuff for blokes <laughs> in it. But um, they've uh, uncovered some documents in uh, in the Colombian State Department. And when does this date back to? So 1968. This goes back to July the second, nineteen forty-eight. Right. But uh, I don't know if we can believe anything in here. Mm. But they're all talking about um, the Germans sending over a party to to make inquiries as to where Hitler might be able to flee to if he needed to, if the, if the war ended and it all went bad for Nazi Germany. And uh, in this report, they're actually saying that um, some people did reconnaissance over here in Colombia. But it's, I mean, you know, it's not far-fetched to imagine Nazis coming to South America because we know they did. We know that Mengele was on the border of Brazil and Paraguay. Sure. Uh, there were others who were funneled out through the Mercedes-Benz co co company that got into Argentina and so on and, and so forth. And the famous Nazi hunter was hot on their heels. Yeah, Simon Wiesenthal and Simon stuff. And, of course, then you look at the... Um, uh, uh, what's the one of as it Ben Levy? I can't remember the book written by whomever, Boys from Brazil, which is, deals with that and so on. So it's not. I mean, it's not something of lore. I mean, it's it's it, it, it did happen. And if you look at the Bolivian army at the time, they looked like a Prussian army. I mean, they have the old helmets and stuff. And in, even up till 1943, Colombia was more Axis uh, um, affiliated until they could see that the, the, the tide was turning. For yeah, the sure. Allies, and so there was a big community here. There would have been a support network, but what do we think? I mean, what else? What else have we well, got on these, I mean, on these uh, documents? The theory is kind of—it's not beyond comprehension, really, to think that Hitler would have made it if he did survive. Mm. Let's just say, if he did survive the Second World War and actually fled to another country around the world, he probably would have gone for South America. Yeah. 
just given that so many other prominent Nazis actually did make it here. Yeah. The theory is that thousands of Nazis made it here through the rat runs of Europe, through Spain. Some yeah. of them stayed in Spain, some of them moved on. So, um, yeah, it's totally... Hang on, I can see there you've got written down Klaus Barbie was in Bol Bolivia That's to right, France. That's right, Bolivia, yeah, and then he got extradited back to France in right. 1983. Klaus Barbie, horrible a, people. A, assassinated... Um, By Mossad. Uh, mysteriously died and... Adolf Eichmann was in Argentina. Jeez, yeah. Who else you got you got, this, you got You got... Uh, I can read upside down. <laughs> Franz Stangl, he was in San Paolo. Wow. Um, yeah, Gustav. Gustav Wagner, the wolf, co you know, Brazil. his nickname, the wolf, was in Brazil. And they were here till 1978. I mean, this was, we're talking about very recent yeah, and days. Some I know of them even done interviews on television on, in Argentina and so on. So and I find this interesting because, you know, every now and then one of these stories pops up about, you know, someone like a Ukrainian guard at one of the death right. camps, the one in Canada, I think, or that's in right, New yeah. Jersey, and now being sent back. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's, 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 it, it is interesting because my, my father, you know, has been passed away, but he lived all through this. You know, he was, sure, he was an 18 year old just about to go off to war during this. And so I, we, I guess, you know, you grew up in, in the UK, or maybe in Germany a little bit, I don't know. But I grew up in the UK, and we were taught about it. It was yeah. something that was very Second present, World War. Was, was, was a key thing. So I know that maybe, I'm going to sound old, maybe the youth of today yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't understand it's the all importance. such a long time ago. <laughs> you know, 1945. But what really strikes me, when I look at these articles, and I look at informants and stuff, uh, in these names, is that what would Hitler then have done in the 10 years oh, geez. between supposedly dying in his bunker in, in Berlin and then, and then turning up in Tuncha under an assumed alias? This what is, could this, this is you know, would he have been in Franco Spain? Would he have been in North Africa? Would he have been in Brazil? I don't know. We can let the theory run right here. So, yeah. I mean, the, the theory is that the, the conspiracy here is, is that Hitler fled to Argentina. Right. And then he somehow traveled to Tunca in <laughs> Colombia in 1944. Yeah. And he's, he somehow milled around Tunja for, let's say, up to a year until January. 1955. Right. Now, what was he doing in Colombia for, let's say, that one year? It's, it's, it's curious. I he mean, could have been, um, there was, a, at that time, around that time, there was the dictator in Colombia. Yeah. Well, kind of dictator, done well, a coup d'etat, yeah. yeah. And the uh, funny thing is, is that he went to Germany during the Nazi era to acquire weapons for the Colombian military. <laughs> he went there in 1936. So, you know... And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know too much about this dictator. Maybe you can tell. Was he right wing or left wing? Uh, or? Quite right wing. Quite and right wing. Fact, so there you go. So he's kind of yeah. aligned with him. Gustavo Rojas Pinilla and Gustavo Rojas Pinilla. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Enrique Peñalosa's family of his. Oh. If I'm not mistaken, somewhere down the line. Okay. But everything is connected, as you know, between political families in Colombia. But I might be wrong. I, I might be wrong. Well, you could, well, um, you might be right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I find this fascinating. Let's take a brief, brief uh, pause. Uh, we'll come back. But it's a, I think we need to dwell on this and the listeners to dwell on this. It's like, what is the likelihood of Hitler coming to Colombia and then setting up shop in Tunja? Uh, you know, scenic Tunja, one of the coldest parts of Colombia outside of Bogota so it's what I would say probably in those days it would be half a day or a day's journey from Bogota and, and the now population still... maybe was about 50 to 100,000 yeah, people yeah if that and, and my and town of Vegeta has got like 20 yeah. something so it's a quarter of my town and you'd stand out yeah. being a you foreigner would, yeah. <laughs> because you're more going you, to the, the Kunde Boyacense is really you're going to look different from someone from he was Austrian, Hitler, right? Yeah, he was, yeah, he was yeah. born Austrian. Yeah, he was really, so anyway, well, think about that. Let's take a brief pause and come back to this and discuss further the memos from the CIA and other files. Fascinating to talk about this. It's fascinating to talk about it out loud. So this is episode 209. We're talking to Stuart Oswald, who's uh, he's an expat here and making, you know, just busy, busy on his farm in Vieta, but also interested in, in all sorts of things. And, uh, and we're just discussing this because it's timely. So we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Please don't go away. That's yeah, so uh, there we have it, guys. That's the halfway mark in the interview that I had with Richard McCall. Um, all of these documents, everything you can find on my website. I've written a blog about it. 
probably going to elaborate on it a bit more. Um, but right now in the recording, yeah, we take a break. And in a few moments we're going to go back on and I'll set the camera down so you can check out the view of Bogota. Uh, I do get a little bit of uh, scatterbrains during the interview in the first part. Second part, hopefully I bring it together again. And uh, I hope it's of some kind of interest to you. But yeah, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Click the link. Check out Richard McCall's Columbia Calling podcast. Check out my one as well. I'll put all the links down below in the description of the video. And uh, yeah, here we are. We're going back in. Yes, we're back. This is episode 209 of Columbia Calling. And we're here in the garden, the very scenic gardens at the back of the Museo Nacional, downtown Bogota. So if you're here in Bogota, of course, you know, you should definitely visit this museo, former prison, but now, you know, converted to something a, a little more cheery. Uh, and there's a Juan Valdez at the back, and that's where we find ourselves right now. I'm here with Stuart Oswald, who's a, a resident of Vieta, so an hour and a half outside of Bogota, much nicer weather. Uh, he will be busy himself on the panela farm and harvesting and exporting chilies and so on but we're talking about believe it or not adolf hitler in colombia now you know as i mentioned in the first segment it got picked up by most of the world's press because there seems to be an enduring fascination with this figure because we never saw a body i guess it's not like the che guevara on the bed in he's bolivia bad man of we the 20th saw the century body. yeah he's a bad man <laughs> yeah, it's, but there's, there's this fascination so We've got to the point, in 1954 and 1955, Hitler was in Tunja, so the capital of the Boyaca department, uh, and he was under an assumed alias. And you no, have yeah. the assumed alias, the name there. Yeah, we, we've got it. So um, the assumed alias is Adolf Schüttelmeier. Schüttelmeier. Now, why, I don't know why he chose that name. It means Shakemeier in, Shake in German. Shakers in shaking, not the... <laughs> Okay. The shake, yeah. So, but shaking, shake. like so. How, why, but is that a is it a it's, common it German can, name? Yeah, yes, it's not an unheard of name. Okay, it's a double bar, bar, double barreled name in a way. Right. Schüttel, and then Meyer. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't know why he chose that. He kept his first name. Probably should have changed his first name while yeah. he was at it. But it, yeah, I mean, obviously <laughs> you wouldn't. But but yeah, okay. But that's the thing. Now we've got this. We've got these documents. You've got yeah. released documents from the CIA released at the same time as these Kennedy documents, and I've got this the the, the Miami Herald's report, and they've got this, these copies of microfilms, and I think what this is the most uh, impacting issue, not only around the whole story, is that there is a photo. Yeah, this is it. So uh, this is where it, this is where it maybe becomes real. Yeah. So. Um, in the CIA document, you can have a look at that yeah, too. We've both got copies of this photo of, uh, before us. In the in the CIA document, um, this code named Kaim Lloyd Lee. Gita, yeah. He, he states here that his friend surreptitiously obtained a photograph Citroen referred to. So Philip Citroen, which was the guy who was in close contact yeah. with Hitler on a monthly basis, um, he 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 let loose that he had this picture that was taken of him and Hitler in this let me get the name here <laughs> residencias colonialis in, in tunga so the picture the setting here was actually in this residential house not far from the town square in tunga so this is where he lived this is where hitler is supposed to have either lived or frequented often and now the, the house is known like the, the the cia report goes on and the informant goes on is that the the, the town and this uh, around this house it seems to be overpopulated by former nazis there see it seems to be um there, there seems to be loads of former ss troopers there and people doing a uh, higher hitler su uh, salute and all of this nonsense yeah and the picture is supposed to have been taken in that residence or somewhere around to her maybe in a a townhouse outside the town or something like that but it's 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 odd and if we talk about this guy citroen and we come back to the photo citroen he says in this document that he talked to hitler about once a month during a business trip that took him to colombia where he said hitler was hiding mm. 
And he also said that Hitler was actually still alive, obviously, and that the former dictator could no longer be prosecuted as a criminal of war because it had been over 10 years since the end of World War II. Is, is that true? Is but that I don't correct? even think that's technically They're true. They're still getting yeah. people these days. Yeah. So they, they, um, they had the wrong information. Now, he said, the former German SS trooper, so Citroen, also told... Simer Lodi's three's friend, so the informant, that he posed with the alleged Hitler for a photograph, which is included in the CIA memo. So this is it. So this is Citroen is, oh, is on this, the left, on yeah. the left, and Hitler on the right. Now, you that can't, like Hitler, yeah. yeah, you can't doubt that this looks like Hitler, but at the same time, are we sure it's him? I mean, he's got the last. He, the thing about Hitler is, is he, he shares this facial hair now with only one other person who's alive. It's Mugabe. It's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's true, the last yeah. facial hair faux pas. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a Hitler moustache. The two of them have it. But okay, so it's a it's a man. It's not a clear photo. Yeah, so let's let's it's, it's, a, it's a really bad photo. Yeah. I mean, uh, the picture I'm guessing would have been. Um, a grey shaded picture yeah. black and white but this is just totally stark black and white yeah just a you can copy. see their white hands and the white faces and a yeah. tie and a shirt and but you know but that's definitely Hitler if he's got his he's got the moustache but if from images I see of Hitler you know giving his vast speeches and so on and so forth and yeah. rabble rousing from what I can see on this picture he doesn't appear to have aged yeah, and he, ten years on the run is a long time. That's true. And <laughs> he has got a slightly, lo but he has got a slightly longer face than I remember. Okay, his chin's a little bit longer. He could have just been. Let's just say that this is all nonsense, and he could have just <laughs> been an eccentric, eccentric wannabe Hitler in <laughs> in Tunja, and all the n former Nazis just rallied around him and just remembered the good old times. Bizarre. Or maybe the picture was was indeed from Philip Citroen with Hitler but not in, not in Colombia maybe it was back in Germany but then what would Philip Citroen have to gain by making up a rumor like true, this yeah. but, then, but, but we don't know but they're possibly a, a, about but on the back of the image it says Adolf yeah. Schüttel, Schüttel, Schüttelmeier Schüttelmeier, Schüttelmeier yeah. and yeah. we got to go so let's go yeah. to that picture right because <laughs> it's, it's written there in hand yeah. and they spelled Colombia wrong they spelled it with a U <laughs> and they spelled Tunja wrong they spelled it with, with a, a G, G instead yeah. of a J <laughs> and then it says here America del Sur so there's something in Spanish there but yeah. if they know Spanish they would have written Colombia right as well right. And that's 1954. 1954. So, so it, right now, the theory, I don't know, you either believe it or you reject it. If, this, if you believe it, then Hitler's alive and he's in Colombia. And he leaves later on in January 55, 55. to make, his way, make yeah. his way back to Argentina. Argentina. Um, or we could elaborate a bit more on this residencias. Yeah. Uh, where I've just found from a, a local historian mm -hmm. that there were actually it was indeed a focal point of Germans now I don't want to cast <laughs> you know a black you know tar brush all over the Germans living in Tunja this doesn't mean by any means that they're descendants from mm. Nazis or anything let's not get into that no. but there were Germans in Tunja notable Germans and they were um, centered they were focusing their time and their and uh, energies on this residencias coloniales. Mm. So um, we found um, a couple, Vincente Edis, right, and his wife, Mrs. Edis. <laughs> Mrs. Edis. I don't right. have a name for her, but uh, they're recorded to have been residing in this residencias coloniales. They resettled from Germany after the war, around 40, 47, if I'm, if I remember correctly. Uh -huh. Now the wife was noted as being beautiful and elegant. Uh, maybe that's what everyone thought of her. Maybe yeah. she was blonde hair, blue eyes, and they just never saw anyone like that before. And she used to wear a, um, a notable beret and a, a long black coat okay. when she walked through the town of Tunja. <laughs> now the, the thing is, this all ended in tragedy when she killed herself near the Republic Bank which was a Republic Bank in Tunja, a few blocks away from mm. Residencia Colonialis. And uh, the, the reason was is that her husband suffered from, if I term this correctly, post-traumatic stress during his time in the war in Germany. Okay. So, so that's they that were Germans and they family. were residing there and they had a, a link to Germany during okay. the war. And who else? And then there's just one more, Julius Sieber. Now, he was born in Friedrichshafen, which is southwest Germany, right. 1892. He's an educator, and he moved before the war to, to, to Germany, and he sort of 
set up home in Tunha and he started a school, a boys' school. And then during the during Nazi during the, the Third Reich, he went back, he got his calling and he went back in 1936 and he took up a government job. Huh. And he stayed in Germany until 1947 as well. And, and then he returns. Returns to yeah. Colombia again. He returns to Colombia, returns right back to Tunja, goes back to his school where which he founded. And uh, the really weird thing here is that he changed the school's insignia to resemble uh, a black eagle, the, the Nazi, Nazi black, black eagle. eagle. Yeah. Now, I mean, in, in Germany we still use eagles. You yeah. get it on the passports and so on, nothing like stuff like that. But it just seems odd that he's. It seems that, that it's noted away, as well. Yeah. It's something that's been noticed. That's why yeah. it's been noted down. No, I just think it's very odd. But of course, 1947 Tungha, I think, is going to be more comfortable than 1947 Berlin. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, with all that's gone on. But it's just very odd. Um, I think the only way to really investigate this, and I don't know if I've got time or the will to do so, oh, yes. but it's to investigate these fringe people further. Julius Sieber and... Uh, the Edders family. I think they would be yeah. the ones who'd see if there were any connections through the Residencias Coloniales to the Adolf Schuttelmeier or Adolf Hitler being there. It seems very odd to me, but we kind of bring this up. Why is this now a, a theme that people are talking about? Well, there's, there's an Argentine journalist, specialist in it, he's made his name about it, called Abel Basti. Yeah. who's written a book called, called Tras los Pasos de Hitler, which is more or less means, you know, in the footsteps of, of Hitler. Um, and it, 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 it tracks the alleged movements of Hitler throughout South America and more specifically in Colombia. But how can you write a full book about hearsay with I mean I mean I guess he would say that the photograph is conclusive evidence yeah but I would say well I look at that photograph we don't know if it's from 1954 really we don't know if it was, wasn't taken in Germany beforehand or in so, Venezuela yeah. or in Brazil I, it, for me not to not to you know talk down a book because I'll probably buy it anyway yeah. uh, in the book fair next year because I know he's coming up to launch it there um, it seems odd to, to write a whole book about what might he, have been yeah. one year's one year of Hitler's life. Now he wasn't only in Tunja, was he? He spent time no, in Bogota. That's yeah, that's true. Yeah, and this uh, this this uh, this author, Abel Basti, he will um, he'll go all out on this. He's actually posted a Twitter on yeah. uh, a, a picture on Twitter about it outside a house not very far from here in the <laughs> in a neighbouring barrio to where we are yeah, in, 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 in the in university. Yeah. So, Kido, yeah. Which is a very nice area, and they've got huge, sprawling mansions which have been, you know, uh, uh, renovated into university buildings, into offices, because families really can't maintain a house of that size, and it's too much money. But the house is still standing, it's an ornate house right in a very obvious part of it. It's got sort of green and red balconies, and very, very it's nice. A very beautiful house. Uh, yeah. But people said they used to remember there being like guards there. There, oh, there, there there was some sort of mention of there being guards outside and everyone was like but well, why in 1954 would you have guards outside your house so anyway so it gives more gives yeah. rise to again we can go on about conspiracy theories but we don't want to be seen as the madmen. <laughs> let's, no way, let's yeah. do someone else do the research and we can just talk about it um i think it's very odd i think why, why not but then you know, and then I want to write, just say about this uh, Miami Herald um, article because it does very well at summing it all up. And he says, you know, there was additional contra um, controversy surrounding Hitler's death in 2009. Mm -hmm. so, so, so a few years ago, when U.S. researchers say they conducted a DNA test for an hour on what the Russian government claimed was a skull fragment from the German dictator. The researchers found it belonged to, and they quote, a woman between the ages of 20 and 40. So it just sort of shows that there's always some sort of mystique around this figure. Yeah. Uh, is he under the rubble in Berlin? I think so. Even, you know, yeah, even, well, you don't know. Even well, President know. Ivan Eisenhower in 1952, <laughs> he stated that there was no evidence that Hitler actually died uh, in his bunker. There you go. There you go. So wow. I like to think. I like to do a little bit of. A little, let's let's, yeah, let's uh, think probably. outside the bo uh, the box in this one. And if we think of 1954, 1955, Colombia. So 
how his life would have been. He wouldn't wow. have left the house particularly often. I should, if he left the house, either one in Residencias Coloniales in Tungha, and uh, or the one in, here in Teosaquillo, he would have done so. He would have been, yeah, it, totally. It may be isolated. in disguise or under cover of darkness. Yeah. He may have gone to the German club or something. That's true. Yeah, met, met his yeah. Nazi friends here and there in the country you know, houses. But then beyond that, what would you have done? I mean, was he? If he was here, was he planning? You know, like the is it the Michael Harris book, the, the Fatherland book? The, yeah, there's there's rumor that he wanted to set up a, the, the Third Reich here in Latin America. All that nonsense. Yeah. Well, who knows? I mean, what else have you got on these documents here, Stuart? That maybe we can talk about because it's very. I mean, I find it really interesting. Uh, that there is this link, and I think it's, but but I, don't, I just don't know. I think it's a, I think it's a bit of a dead end. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you either, this is what I was saying before. You either believe it, you reject it, or you just say, hey, I don't know, mm. and wait for some more evidence. The thing is, getting a, getting this noted in a CIA document. Yeah. Having all the circumstantial evidence, circumstantial, let's point yeah. out, of the informants, the Citroen, the. The visits monthly, Hitler's the big conspiracy theorists that Hitler went to Argentina. It, the, the 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 potion here in South America would have been sort of accepting towards Hitler in some form or another with dictators and politicians and yeah, movements yeah. and and the remoteness of South America. See, there's places you know in Virginia even that are you know there's country houses that I don't know who lives in there who, yeah. who lives in those places yeah and, it, and, and you said there's a big German influence in Colombia from those years and prior to those as I've I've spoken before of Montbos oh, sure, yeah. and and the, the forefather of Colombian cattle farming Taichan and he was from Bremen yeah. uh, and of course there is a blacklist of oh, yeah. names yeah. of Germans Japanese and Italians resident in Colombia during World War II who had their lands sort of like two thirds of their whatever they may own was taken by the government and most of them ended up going back to Germany uh, oh, after that because they had been humiliated and of course they were uh, again I know you've got the, the notes there they were held in a hotel outside of Bogota in a town called Fusagasuga which is on the way if you're going to the resort towns of Girardot and and Melgar I only or found it yeah. yeah, only so, found it out the yeah. other day and, but it's the Hotel Sabaneta I believe which yeah, doesn't exist it, yeah. anymore but as you it, say it's a cement factory it's a cement factory or a cement warehouse only one wall of the old hotel exists and it, but they you know it's referred to as an internment camp and it was an internment camp in that people were there against their their will but it doesn't resemble anything like we remember from Germany 1940s 1940s, 1945, etc. Uh, it, it's not like the, the the extermination camps. They were sure, held against yeah, the world. Let's in, give them that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 the Japanese were largely held in the town of Corinto, which is near to where their their primary settlements were in Cauca. Uh -huh. um, and a lot of them went back. There is still a very a small population in Cali. Uh, there is a Japanese foundation there, which still talks about it. But they, um, and apart Obviously, from that, it's, it's it's very interesting. But it's it's not a spoken about history in Colombia, particularly. Oh, and uh, the, the, the funny thing is, is that we're all talking about far right <laughs> Germans. They, they were actually um, people fleeing Nazi Germany. So mm -hmm. Germans that were tr maybe communists and mm -hmm. such, you know, or Jews looking yeah. at getting out of Nazi Germany and making mm -hmm. a new home in in South America. So it wasn't just the no. far right. It was other Germans, you know. <laughs> I, I, notable politicians as well who have uh, Antonio Navarro Wolf as the, well who's he's far, far left he's <laughs> far left far, so, far left so uh, yeah so you, you've got all sorts coming here it wasn't well, just course, Nazi uh, Germans what I mean other, what are the, in your time here coming back and forth have you come across any other like really That's really German question. names I, I uh, no to be honest no, I, not myself no not in my town no I met someone called uh, Nodman the other day, N O B M A double N. kind of a joke. Yeah, and I thought it was too. <laughs> and she was Costeña as well. I mean, it was like uh, oh, geez. from Barranquilla, but her name was we've it's medical. Well, I won't say it on the But Nordman was the surname, and she said oh, yes, yeah. it was from German descent. So and well, yeah, and you've got uh, you've got yeah other Germans. You've got um, the the founder of the Bavarian brewery, right? Who was a German Jew. So I don't think Hitler would have been drinking any of his beer. Avianca. Yeah, and Avianca as well. Skanta. Yeah, Jews. 
the whole thing. And one of the first pilots for Avianca who died in a crash near Hirardot had actually flown with the Red Baron. And I can't remember his wow, name. So That's a good. real link to Germany there, isn't it? It actually flew with the Red You've Baron. It all. Um, no, I've done research on other things in, in the past about this, but it's, it's this whole thing about Hitler has has brought it back to the fore. And I just think it very odd. I really do. I find it. I find. I personally am very skeptical. We need to find his body. But this is not to say <laughs> that I don't find it fascinating. And the CIA decided to spend some time on the case. He's means that they the weren't dome, throwing yeah. any, you know, they weren't throwing caution into the wind. They weren't. They, this needs to be researched. So that's that's in itself says something. There's like sure. the CIA. I mean, they've got access to however much information. They've got we all have their right stations here. all across yeah. South America. And then, of course, you've got if you look into 1950s. When did Plan Condor come about? When where uh, and all of this when the Americans really started helping out sort of right of center governments against the let's say the communist threat. Uh, I think it's probably later when we're looking at uh, Galtieri, Videla in Argentina, and prior to them, and of course Pinochet in Chile. Yes, of course, because that's like 65, like right? So the whole proxy yeah. Cold War going and on here. And the Banza, Banza in Bolivia and, and others. But I think it's, it's still 10 years too early for the CIA to have too much information in Colombia, isn't it? It's and you know, they copied it into other stations, Caracas, yeah. Bogota, and Buenos Aires. It's interesting. It's interesting, but I don't know if it's if it's complete. So what do, what do they we conclude? Well, they, well, the CIA conclude that this is this is just a. F they they concluded it's a fanciful sort of conspiracy or something or other, and they said you shouldn't waste any more time on it. That's what they said. Whether right. the conspiracy again going on, whether they were defending him or something like that, I don't know. So, do I ask this of you, uh, Stuart? Will you spend any further time on this? I'm probably. Uh, I'm not a. Uh, I don't idolise him or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, but I'm probably going to pay a little visit to Tunga and have a look at the at the house. The residence is colonial. They killed herself, so that's probably as far as I'm going to take it. When you do, take some photos, send them to us, or put them on a blog, and we'll link to it so people can see. Because I know that this this episode is going to be very popular because it's just just so it's bizarre, really. It's yeah, just we've bizarre. gone to and fro here. We, <laughs> we just we don't we're not convinced ourselves. I'm not convinced. I'm I'm not convinced, but. Who knows? I mean, without spending real time in Tunga and meeting some of the like the older generations, do they still even exist? I, wow, I don't know. Be it's fascinating to talk to someone. Yeah. Well, Maybe that's the there you go. That's your homework. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone wants to uh, talk? Can I have to go to the National me. Archives before long, so I'll take another look back in there. But I don't think this, you know, given the the, the bureaucracy here and how they kept paperwork in the past it would be a needle in a haystack if i were to find anything and be really amazing otherwise but i don't think so so i hope uh you've enjoyed this podcast today episode 209 in truth i've really enjoyed chatting about oh, it oh, it's, thank you Richard. <laughs> it's been fun no it's been fun because we've been back and forth but we've been talking about something as it's of let's say universal interest i think and there's a sort of almost mystique and mythology around it and uh well we've come here with the facts uh, listeners, uh, what do you think? Uh, get in touch, you know, leave a message on the on the Facebook page uh, or, uh, of course, send us an email, columbiacalling at gmail.com. We're on Twitter as well, at Columbia Calling. I answer all the emails uh, and, and I love to get them and uh, anything, any feedback is always well appreciated and if you have anyone you want to, you think should be interviewed, let me know. Uh, this week we've had as a very special guest on the show. It's uh, so my original listener, uh, right from day one. Right from day one, Stuart Oswald. So uh, there's a big thank you to to Stuart for being a, a, a long-term believer in Columbia Calling. It's flattering to have listeners, and uh, and I will link, of course, to Stuart's podcast about uh, the Hitler story and to his um, to his blog from 2013. So you guys can make up and uh, form decisions for yourselves. Uh, this is uh, Richard McCall for Columbia Calling signing off today this episode 209 with Stuart Oswald and again thank you for listening it's been a real pleasure bye bye perfect nice one thank that you. was good that was good there we go and uh, audio's cut so uh, make a conspiracy theory we got there uh, thanks for listening everyone uh, there is still some more information to elaborate on this whole conspiracy and uh, you can read it um, a good document to carry on reading is this Police Gazette report from um, from uh, June 1960 something 
Uh, it's quite sensational and you'll get a copy of that over on my blog post that's linked down in the description. Uh, it's got a lot more um, information on there, what Hitler's supposed movement. Again, it's quite sensational, but maybe there is no smoke without fire. Maybe it's true. Quite a few of what's written in this actually collaborates and substantiates the CIA document. So maybe uh, there's more truth to this than is to be told, really. But anyway, thanks for listening. Um, please subscribe to my podcast and Richard McCall's as well. Fascinating stuff, day in, day out, week here and there. And please subscribe, let me know any comments, and of course, just want to finish with this. If you are a German expat or descendant, or maybe if you're a German from Tonka, or you heard your grandparents saying something, or something in the family was said, or you have some old pictures of some kind, or the family emigrated from Nazi Germany before or after or during, uh, please get in contact with me. I speak German, ich spreche perfect Deutsch. So you can contact me in German, uh, English or even Spanish, and uh, we can take it from here. I'm very interested. So thank you very much, thanks for listening, and catch you next time. Click any links on the screen now. And that guy's nearly cleaned his car totally.